Good morning, everybody. My name is Jody. My husband, David John, and I have a small farm in the panhandle of North Idaho. And these are stories and adventures. And yesterday I went to Costco to get some cheese because I'm going to be smoking some cheese this afternoon. And lo and behold, they had bare root fruit trees. And I'm going to show you what I got. And I'm going to leave them in their bags. And I did open them up and dump some water on them about 10 minutes ago just to make sure that the wood chips that are in there are nice and moist to keep the roots moist. And I am going to be trimming the corner off the bottom of the bag so they'll drain out and not have standing water in there. But I'm going to open the shed and show you what I got. So I got two sour cherries. They're basically pie cherries. And I was doing some research and the pie cherries don't need a pollinator. So I really didn't need to get two. I just wanted two. And the peaches and nectarines are self-pollinating. So I wasn't have, I would, didn't have to get another peach, so I got a nectarine. I'll show you that guy. Uh oh, the geese found me. So I got a Fantasia nectarine. Pretty little tree. And like I said, I had gotten two sour cherries. They both look about the same. Look. And then the other one I got is a plum because they do need cross-pollination so I have the green one that I ordered and then this one is a Santa Rosa Japanese plum and it did have an injury that I'm trying to heal up. Okay, since the geese are down here, let's go up to the barnyard and show you what's going on up there. The snow is slowly melting off the garden. Oh, I gotta show you this bird feeder. But David John made me this open-based sunflower feeder. So far the squirrel hasn't found it. He keeps whoa, dumping that one out. But like I was saying last week, we had another uber cold stretch. And hopefully this is the last one. But in this herb bed, I'm really glad that I planted the rosemary in the hoop house because that stuff does not look like it's going to have a comeback. But I'll show you how cold it was by a look at the pond. Other than right there where that hose goes in, it's pretty frozen. The waterfall does look pretty well. So we only have to deal with Valkyrie up here and she's for the most part other than going to be whining that she's up here by herself with no other geese. She has started laying. So when we go down to the house I'll show you a couple of her big eggs but let's go into the hoop house and I have been on in the afternoons opening it up just trying to let it exhale a little bit but last Sunday I went through in here and added a layer of bone meal blood meal and some earthworm castings and kind of mixed it into the top layer was going to water it in. Really glad I didn't because 
it froze during that cold and it really would have froze if I'd watered that all in so just got this kind of prepped and ready for the brassicas probably here in a week once this ground thaws out again and I'm able to water it in I'll be able to get those guys planted in here because right now the thermometer down at the house says it's 47 out right now according to that one it's only about 50 in here but I have had the door open for about an hour so definitely heats up in here but let's go look at the birds so we've got professor in front and junior and his sister in the back there little pile of duckies and let's see if I can catch that little little guy <coughs> okay now that I caught this little one let's move in the sunlight so you can see him So when I ordered my Russian Orlovs, I ordered 24 hens and three roosters. As it turns out, I now have six roosters. But this little one, which is really interesting because I'll have to get a picture of one of the roosters. They normally have a tiny, tiny comb and he has like no comb at all. He is absolutely gorgeous. and uber uber tiny compared to his brothers but he's one of my pretty orloff roosters yes you are pretty boy <laughs> but there's my little man let's see if we can get a uh, one of his brothers is over here So there's one of the full or the one of the other roosters and as you can see the he's definitely has more of a comb than little man does because little man it's got a comb like one of the hens but really need to get out and get these pens cleaned out because it's the only trouble with having the Muscovies and the chickens together is the Mus Ow. Muscovies just make everything like mud layer. But that's it's like the two bales of pine shavings for after I get this area cleaned out but it's one of those all of their pens just look like that got the layer of mud over the top of the shavings that have to get cleaned up but where I'm gonna need to be dumping all of that as you see is just a snow field so let's grab these feed bags that I keep forgetting to grab and go down to the house and I'll show you how I smoke my cheese. So the first step to smoking your cheese is you're going to want to get your smoker going. Uh, my tray is full of just uh, barbecue pellets for like a Traeger grill when I'm cold smoking because I'm going to keep this 
hopefully below 100 just because I don't want to heat the cheese up. I just want it to get the smoke flavor. So if I just use the light that's in the middle that's for burn heating the wood to make it smoke, it keeps it pretty low. So get this guy started. Okay, that is just got the the center flame going. Put our tray in and shut the door. And I am going to grab these trays out of here so we have them in the house to put the cheese on. Hence the reason I have a glove because they are kind of gooey. So I've got the two and a half pound block of pepper jack cheese. We really like how this tastes smoked. So I'm going to unwrap this guy and cut him into five chunks that are about three and a half centimeters a piece and that's about an eight ounce hunk of cheese so let's get this guy unwrapped so I can maybe there we go just going to take this piece that's already cut and use him as a marking spot. And there, I have a tray of cheese ready to get smoked. And the last time I did it, I did them in, or the last couple times, I did them in a pan. The tops get really smoky, the bottoms not as much. So I've got this 100% uh, cotton muslin material that I'm going to put down so that way the smoke will be able to get on the bottom also and completely permeate the cheese so I'm going to get the rest of these cut and then we'll go out and get them in the smoker because it should be good and ready by then and plus the fabric helps protect the cheese from the smoky greasy stuff that's on my trays
So there I've got my four trays of cheese ready to go in the smoker. Let's go out and see if the smoker's ready for us. So there you can kind of see some smoke coming out. Don't get confused by the burn pile or the fire pit smoldering. But there is some smoke coming out, so gonna grab the cheese and get it put in. And opening the back vents all the way really did drop the temperature down. So I'll let these guys smoke for about 45 minutes to an hour, 45 minutes. We'll come and take a look at them and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes, so let's crack this open and see what it looks like. It definitely is looking really good. It's good. I'm gonna close the louvers in the back just a little bit just to keep a little more of the smoke in but we'll be back to check on it in about another 20. So while that cheese is finished smoking I told you when we were up at the barn that I was gonna show you uh, Valkyrie's egg. I do have a little sampling of the different eggs that I I've been getting so I thought we could take a look at those just to kill some time and it's pretty interesting what I've got and that red you're seeing is not that the elements on it's the light reflecting through some hot oil kind of confused me for a second there too but okay so there's a collection of the chicken eggs I've been getting. I've got a couple different sizes here and a couple different colors just depending on the age of the hen as to how big the eggs are because it's like this smaller one here and this one here they're from hens that have just started to lay but as they get older the eggs will become bigger. So those are my chicken eggs. And the next are going to be my Muscovy duck eggs. And Muscovies do have really heavy bloom that even though I've scrubbed these, not all of it comes off. So it's like this one here and this one here got pretty clean because they're from an older hen that her doesn't have as strong a bloom. So compare a chicken egg to a duck egg. Duck eggs just a little bit bigger. And then the next batch of eggs are going to be my turkey eggs. Shadow is the white female turkey that I have that is the mom to the three baby yeah the three babies and these are Shadow's eggs so nice size turkey eggs and her daughter has started to lay a little bit smaller egg than her mom's but She's like on her fifth egg that she's laid, so they will get bigger. So there's that collection. And then the next batch is going to be Valkyrie's eggs. And as you can see, nice white, big, big eggs. So you take a goose egg compared to a chicken egg compared to a duck egg the adult turkey egg 
and the juvenile turkey egg. So pretty cool how Mother Nature just makes everything just a little bit different. But nice big eggs. So the temperature on the smoker was a little tiny bit over a hundred, which is fine. The cheese is looking really good. <coughs> it is starting to get some color to it. Probably give it about 10 more minutes because I don't want it to be in too long because then it gets kind of bitter. <coughs> So we'll give them 10 more minutes, then we'll pull them out and I'll show you how we get them ready for going in the fridge. So here is the first tray of cheese. As you see, they've got a little bit of golden color on them kind of look like they're just slightly toasted and I'll just let them sit here on the counter for about a half an hour just to for lack of a better term to relax and then we'll get the food saver out and vacuum seal each one individually so how we preserve our cheese is we got ourselves a food saver and kind of for this purpose and for other uses but the main reason that you want to seal up your blocks of cheese is it helps force the smoke flavor all the way through your piece of cheese <clears throat> And we will refrigerate or cure these for about a month before we start selling them. And we've found in the past that when we've done it, we just put them in a Ziploc baggie. And then by the time the month of curing has come around, they're starting to mold or you get into it and then they just start to go bad really fast. So we do this so that way it helps preserve them and they look like this when it's all done they will get a label and a date and how much they weigh I do go through and individually weigh each one when I put the label on them so let's show you how this food saver works and basically all it does is it sucks the air out of the bag. So on my machine it's all powered up. You can choose either dry food or moist. And I'm doing this as moist food. No, I don't want to seal. And you slide it right in here. And there it is sealed. It does take a minute to recover to let the heating plate cool down. So it's not super fast process. So this is where I'm going to end today's video. And I did scramble the egg, turkey eggs for the dogs. Going to give them a treat. Mostly it will be Kiesel, Bella 
really not a fan of eggs. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I hope you have a good day and a good week. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Kiki.